We are live. Welcome one and all to the 2014 USA BMX BMX Hall of Fame. And right now, first interview up, excuse me, this is Jason Richardson talking. So in case anyone doesn't recognize the voice, it's not Gork, it's not Shannon, it's Jason. But who I have here is Tracer and Shelly Finn. How are you? How are you both doing tonight? I'm so happy for Tracer. I'm just very, very happy. So Tra <laughs> Tracer said he's psyched. So being a, fe a fellow Vegas person, um, it, it's nice to see. It's nice to see someone go in who's who's raced desert surf and homers and rough riders. Um, are we gonna? Are we gonna? What kind of stories are we gonna expect from you tonight? Short and sweet. Is that because we don't want any tears? We trying to we trying to look good in front of our, of our in front of front of our son or what? What's up? You know that's going to be a roll of the dice. I have no idea, but don't judge me if I do. All right. Well, Cash said the more tears, the more successful this night is. So, oh. so yeah. And and, and as a psych and as a psychologist, it's okay to cry in front of me. So I can counsel now. you. I'm crying now. All right. Well, congratulations. I look forward to the speech. Appreciate thank it. you. Thank you so much. So I just spotted Steve Veltman. I believe a 2010 inductee. Cover of the Wheaties box. What year was the cover of the Wheaties box, Steve? 1983. This gentleman appeared on the cover of a Wheaties box on a BMX bike, no less. How you doing, Steve? Not bad, Jay. How you do? That's all you got for me, just a not bad. <laughs> Hall of Fame. This is your time to shine, man. So tell the tell the crowd what what you've been up to these uh, these recent years. Well, I've been working uh, with some of the junior junior development and some of the elite guys, as well as a um, little bit of product development as well. Um, looking to get a little bit more into grassroots program stuff. So uh, working with athletes, juniors, elites, product development. So I, I don't know if many people remember, I mean, you got inducted to the Hall of Fame for your racing ability, but but truth be known, the Posi Stop would have done it for you alone. So <laughs> what, are the, what, what products do you have coming out that uh, uh, that our, our future BMXers would be would be uh, would be advantageous for them. Uh, well, most of my stuff right now um, is exercise oriented. Now, so I wouldn't say it would be specific for BMX, but for health in general, you know, um, got a couple of things possibly that I might be doing for sprint cycling as well, um, but a little bit under wraps right now. Got it. So. He's being he's being coy, but but the truth is it's all I'm gonna say is it's called the Velt Drive. Hashtag Velt Drive. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, Steve. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. All right. This is BMX history walking right down right here. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Wonderful. Good. So how does it how is it to come here and see the BMX? Just the progression of BMX. No more lights in the lawn chairs. We have three world-class tracks and less than one square mile we're at the olympic training center tell me your thoughts please well it's it's kind of astonishing it the way it's evolved and, and grown and and it, it started out in you know in people's backyards and small tracks and stuff and what the guys are doing today is incredible it's just it's incredible so long uh, we're a long ways away from one jump per straightaway now we now we have s several down one straightaway are you um is this what you envisioned uh, in those early years of the sport, or? Absolutely not, absolutely not. This is a long way from the water puddle that we used to have to go through too. So, no, we never envisioned this. We never envisioned that. that we always hoped that it'd be an Olympic sport, but uh, it wasn't in, in our day, but uh, the guys that are doing it now are doing a good job, and they gave, gave it world exposure, and it's great for everybody. Yeah. And we appreciate you guys, the parents who actually started this thing, uh, giving us a venue to, to go ride our bikes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Mr. Lynn Caston, come on down. I, one of my, this, this, I feel like, how you doing? I, I, this is the James Bond of BMX. This is a cool cat right here. So was proud enough, proud enough to ride his product when on Razorback. And then again, when I was riding on Mosh, he made the frames. And then again, when I was not riding on Mosh, I still rode his bike. I just changed his, put the right stickers back on it. So how have you been? Great, great. For my age, I'm doing okay. Still vertical. Got it. So we, we're here, you're in the aviation industry. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, uh, I've always 
kind of messed around with aviation things, but I came up with a product of my own, a, a line of ground handling equipment that we make. It's all proprietary stuff, and we produce it ourselves, and I love what I do, and so keeps you young. Yeah. So basically, you took some of the technology from the, from the Uniblade fork, and you applied it to a machine that basically allows you to tow your airplane by hand, correct? Well, it's powered. It's electrically powered, but that's that's a general description of what it is. I'm, you, I saw you I'm walk. Really I saw you walking with an airplane behind you, and it looked very easy. It would follow. Yeah, it yeah, follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes it follow you. Very cool. Very, and it's it's really good to see you again. Great to see you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right. He called me son. I love that. So, fellow Vegas. Yeah, man. Fellow Vegas alum. Uh, what what brings you out? I'm gonna ask a dumb question. What brings you out? Tracer Finn. Tracer Finn brings me out, and uh, I'm just real excited to be here for him. And that's it's it's truly an honor. Yeah, it truly is. And you know what's cool? I remember. I was told not to tell personal stories, but I remember back in the day, BITD, McCarran Airport, heading out to the Christmas Classic. You were at the airport, and you couldn't quite make it to the race for whatever reason, and then. A couple years later, we see you, uh, you broke out and won the King of Dirt at the ABA Grands. Do you remember that? Um, I, I, think, I think it was like, like Hurtis Hot Shots in 95, I won the King of Dirt, and then I won the DK Dirt Circuit, which was a Christmas classic, but I didn't make it to that race that you're talking about because I was having problems with the security guards. <laughs> that happens. It's like, that happens. I know. It was like something out of the blue. I was like, oh, you don't have my ticket? Sweet. I don't even want to go anyway. <laughs> right. I knew you couldn't go for some reason, but... It was ridiculous. Yeah. But it, it's, it's been cool to watch you matriculate up. And then and so what are you doing now? You're doing some hosting, MTV. What's up? Yeah, I'm doing some hosting, some MTV stuff. Got a few businesses and things like that in, in Vegas. But nah, I'm just having fun, man. I'm flaneur, bro. I'm just going through life. And wherever it takes me, that's where I'm going to be. A flaneur. Yeah. French word, flaneur. Look at that. All right, we learned a word, flaneur. All right, that's good. That's good. T.J. Lavin is a flaneur. He is a retired dirt dirt jumper, and now he's a flaneur. I, I want to be like him. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> All right, you're wrinkling up the clothes, man. You're wrinkling up the clothes. Weird. We're here, man. It's good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Give you. me some brief thoughts before you get up there and make the big. The big speech. Well, you know, Jason, just like we spoke the other day, it's like, <sighs> finally made the main. <laughs> it's almost like, it's, it's, it's surreal. I mean, on a much smaller level, you know, when you watch the Academy Awards and you see all these actors get up there and they say, you know, I'm humbled and I'm pleased to be here in a group of all of you people, but on a much smaller scale, I can see what they mean now because I look at the people that are here tonight the people that are in the Hall of Fame, the people that have talent but didn't quite make it, and I'm just, I'm humbled. I'm humbled. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and that means a lot that Chuck is humbled because he, his helmet size is like triple XL. So we're gonna go and to so the just, size. just naturally speaking, <laughs> and, and you know, my research on the brain is when you have a triple XL helmet size, it's very difficult to be humble. So for Chuck oh. to say he's humbled. It was really good because when he passed me when I was a rookie and called me a name and almost crashed me on the outside of the turn at Bakersfield, called me a squid, I, I didn't feel like he was too humble. But I'm glad that he's humble now. Love you, well, Chuck. you know, the good thing is, I admit, I still got a big head, and Todd Lyons actually gives me a bad time about that, but at least when I go to Disneyland, I can get on the rides. There you go. There you go. The, the big head dispensation. Miss Deanna Edwards Jameson. Hi, Jay Rich. How you doing? Hi, Nemo. How are you? So here we are. Yeah. Uh, you know, following up Chuck T, that's a hard thing to do. I can beat him. I know. Right? I know. That's the funny thing is as much as much stuff as he talks, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't want an elbow from you. No, he wouldn't at all. I'd beat him down. Okay. So do you have your speech? How much time do they give you for your speeches? Ten minutes, and I'm coming in at 5.2 seconds. Oh, oh, so you I'm have some, so five, you have some, five, five minutes, five minutes, so. So you have some filler time then? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I can play around with it a little All bit, right. so. Now, do they have a hook this year, or are they just going to start playing music to rush you along? 
I know that there's a timer there and Jen said like stand away from the mic and there's a timer there and just watch the timer. So we'll uh, see how that goes. So what's your what's your favorite part about this whole experience? Not this experience because you've been to these before, yeah. but your experience. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of female racing and just experiencing it with like Elise Post, Felicia, that kind of stuff. I will always go back to them because they're just amazing riders. So um, just you know, the females in the sport. So we got our own division now. I think I'm the fourth female racer in. Um, but yeah, just celebrating females in BMX racing. Cool. Very cool. Well, hopefully um, hopefully you can, you know, add, we're going back to the theme that Cash Matthew set, where the more tears, the more successful it is. But, but hopefully you can um, yank it, corral a few tears from the crowd, and I'm sure you will. I will probably make them laugh. I'm hoping to make them laugh. I'm yeah, hoping well, that I'm not going to be crying or anything like te that. Tears from laughter is just as good. Okay. Yes, I can do that. But Mike Miranda's not here, and I've got a funny line with him, but I'm really bummed he's not here tonight. Are you calling anyone out? Uh, Mike Miranda. And Toby, Toby Henderson is big. He just found out that I am actually calling him out. So you'll have to wait and see. All right. Cool. <laughs> cool. So... How are things going? I, I, everyone's seen that, that recent Facebook video of you manualing down the beach on the bike. What's up? Just working hard out in Arizona trying to get better. And, you know, it's uh, a very, very slow process with a spinal cord injury. And we're getting there. It's going to take some time, but we're getting there. We're going in the right direction. I think we are. And, and what, I, what I think, you know, when I work with people, I like to tell, I like to tell them that, you know, everything we go through has value. And I can't help but think of your story and, and just who you are. And I've known you for some, for some time. Um, and I think not only did this, this event have a lot of value for you, but I think you um, persevering through this past year has been an immense, immense inspiration for not only myself, but a lot of other riders. So I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you, Jason. It means a lot. We love you, man. Take care. One of one of the only one of the only Hall of Famers from Nebraska, and he's trying to act like he's having a deep conversation with Eddie King so that he doesn't have to speak with me. All right, where did you see the race today? I didn't. I did, couldn't make it down. It took me five hours to get here. Where? Five hours from Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, I know. You know where it is. It's horrible. Like, how was it? The event was great. I think he's slipping. He should have been here. But anyways, you look well. Thank you. You sir. look well. So it's a very nice. Thank you. I, every year I remember you dress well when I come here. So this is an homage to you. Because I remember two years ago, you were you had, a, you had a black thing on. I was like, I've got to get one of those. So. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So <laughs> I'm inspiring Hall of Famers. He is. He should be in the Hall of Famers. Right. Well, what? I don't pick that. I will. I will get on that. So what year did you get in the Hall of Fame? 2007, those guys had the, uh, they didn't know what they were doing. They let internet people vote. It was like, I'll take it, but I, you know. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. The first so, thing I wrote was, those guys, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't deserve this. You got, But internet guys do everything now, so. Right. Well, there we go. We have scandal. The 2007, <laughs> Greg Grubbs doesn't think he's, he's, he belongs, but I, I don't know. I can't call it. You were just the guy. You were just the guy in the magazine that I saw all the time. So I don't know. I got lucky. All right. We all did. We all did. We're here tonight. I, I know. It's beautiful. Right. Thanks, man. Right. You look great. Good seeing you. You too. Right. <laughs> a kid growing up in New Jersey. You'd look in a BMX magazine and you'd see sunshine and palm trees and people like Woody Itson and Mike Miranda and Martin Aparillo with a big smile on his face. How you doing, buddy? Good. All right. Awesome, man. What's going on? Not much. Hey, take over. You do the interview. All right. All right. So, okay, back in the day, you were riding what? Um, I was riding the pine, man. I was in school looking at magazines, <laughs> looking at you. Okay, a lot of times people ask us this question all the time because you would get a magazine. It'd be three months before you got another magazine. How was that for you? Painful. painful. It was painful. <laughs> and so it's awesome, though. So, so how is it? How is it preparing for this night? So you get the you get the message that you're you're in, you're in the club. Sure. As Charles said, you made the main, sure. which is crazy because you're a freestyler. <laughs> so how is it preparing for this night? Well, it actually 
it's very natural for me because I all my friends are in it, Eddie Fiola, Woody Itson, Mike Dominguez, Ron Wilkerson. So we're all great friends. We see each other every now and then and, and it, the moment we see each other it's just like a natural thing. So this whole thing is natural for us. We just this is our environment. We we thrive in this type of environment. So it's awesome. Cool. Are we gonna see like do you have a bike with you? Or are we gonna see some some eighties flatland yeah, stuff? Well, we're we're gonna see the, like is there a pool they're gonna that's right. <laughs> Remember the cherry picking the lawnmower? Yeah. <laughs> There we go. That's what I want to see. I want to see some pink and some some pastels and some, you know. How about the hip sack? We got to have the hip sack. We do have to have the hip sack. <laughs> awesome. Looking forward to it. Thanks. You're awesome. Thank you. Peace. All right. All right. Take awesome. care. Eddie Fiola. I see Eddie Fiola in the crowd. Martin Aparillo just called him out, so he just happens to be standing here. So. How you doing? Good. So for those of you who don't know, Eddie Fiola is a immensely famous freestyle guy immensely famous undercover stunt man and he has the best teeth in the world thank you <laughs> no they're really good well thank you so uh this event is huge uh, can't wait to uh get in there and see everybody and and uh i'm just glad everybody's showing up well of course they would this is bmx this is what we live for so everyone gets to tell their stories that they told last year this year again yeah, but they have a time limit this year. <laughs> Last year, they didn't have a time limit. Yeah. They just kept going and going, but it was great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not dogging on anybody, but it was... No, you can. John Purse was painful. <laughs> it was okay. It was all right. It wasn't, you know, uh, we love coming here every time, and I can't wait to hear Martin speak. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it as well. Hey, thanks for coming, and thanks Thank for supporting you. BMX. All right. You got all, right. It. all right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. So what's up? How, how many Hall of Fames is this for you? Oh, crap. 12? Or so. Or so. Or so. so what's your favorite part of the... Oh, Deanna said she's calling you out. I heard that. I don't know what she's going to say, but I'm looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, too. <laughs> well, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So how, how did it go for your guys, your products, your stuff that's out there on the Supercross well, we track got, uh, and the and the BMX track and the, the traditional men's. track? We won the men's. So we had uh, six guys in the men's class. We won that. We got second in the girls. We had seven of the, of the eight girls in the main today. So we're, we're extremely happy. Yeah. Wow. So it seems like it seems like you have a bit of a Midas touch when you when it comes to this bike thing. I mean, so you go somewhere and then it blows up and then you start another thing and it blows up. I mean, yeah. you know, and it all started with like fenders and number plates. Yeah, it's a long time ago, but uh, yeah, I like I like buying. I've been around a long time. Selling and creating companies. That's a fun thing, you know. It's kind of like uh, uh, Pretty Woman. Remember that guy? Look at yes. me a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. So anyway, so buying and selling and creating companies is kind of what we do. And, uh, and I love making product. I love the sport. I, I, I've been around it my whole life. Uh, I, I'm, I'm 40 years into this thing and I cannot be any happier with what I'm doing. Yeah. So. Very cool. Very cool. And for those of you who didn't get it, Toby Henderson just said he looked like Richard Gere. We got to go. 2010 Hall of Fame inductee. Good, how are you? Good. So, one of the cool things I thought about when you were inducted, mm -hmm. and I don't know how it worked out that way, but maybe it was karma at work or you picked your spiritual path, but I thought it was very cool how everyone that night, oh, yeah. except for Gork, was a Hutch person. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty cool, yeah. Timmy Judge and me and Veltman. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, such you're, you're an iconic name, right? So I was talking to Martin how as a kid in New Jersey, I used to read, see these magazines and palm trees and, you know, it was your faces. Yep. But then also the brands you've been involved in. I mean, not just Hutch, but... Uh, Diamondback, Bassett. I was an original member of the Vans freestyle team, so... Is that with the checkerboard sleeves? Pretty lucky. I was pretty lucky. The right place, right time. I mean, I can't blame the 80s on me. I mean, it was. We all kind of dressed a little funny, and uh, but it was good, man. I'm happy I did it. We're, we're happy you did it, too. Thanks for coming out. All right. <laughs>